In the game Galactic Coliseum, you are on the prison moon of Callisto, serving your sentence and having to fight to the death to survive. The goal of the game is to collect points, and the way to collect points is to defeat different enemies as the levels expand. The way to defeat enemies is to collect power cubes to power up your weapons. The cubes and the color of the cubes will decide whether or not you have the strength to take out certain enemies. I'm going to quickly do a basic explanation of how to set up and play Galactic Coliseum. In this game, you're going to have a board, you're going to have all your player mats, you're going to all have different number of tiles depending on the number of players. You're going to have player cards with special powers and we'll go into that later. But you're going to take the spawn tiles and place a blue one on every spot on the board. Additionally, in the last rows here, the stage four rows, you'll place one red tile on top of it. So there'll be two tiles in the last rows. To set up the game, there's a deck that changes the setup each time. So one of these will be flipped, and it will determine where the additional gold pieces go and where the extra red pieces go. So you'll set that up once you flip one of these tiles. Once you set up the board according to these cards, you'll have something that looks like this. You'll have the gold placed in the correct spots, and you'll have these red tiles, which we call alpha tiles, placed in their correct spots. Blue ones are considered beta tiles. Up on top here, you'll notice that I've put siphon gems on each stage, except for stage four, because every stage, players will receive a new siphon gem, except for in stage four. Uh, the player characters go in this spot right here. This is the, the beginning zone. And to start the game, you'll reveal the enemies that'll appear in stage one. So stage one is this area here. The next zones out here because are stage two. Stage three is the next zone. Stage four is the last zone over here. So it's a gauntlet that constantly expands with new enemies. When you have these tiles show up, it'll tell you what character and what color goes on this. So this would be a cyan scrapnel. So you grab a cyan scrapnel from the collection of enemies over here and place it on that spot. These uh, print and play cards represent the miniatures that will eventually exist for this game. So I'll do the same thing for all those spots. So there'll be a sentinel that goes over here, a cyan sentinel over here, a yellow sentinel over here, and so on. If you see a spot that says none, you remove that tile from the game. In this case, the zone is completely empty at that zone. So I've set up the initial miniatures in stage one. At the beginning of the game, you can select your own character. So the gladiator you choose, you can either choose it maybe randomly or maybe you can pick your favorite. It really depends on how you want to play. You'll get these character cards which have special traits. At the beginning of the game you're going to choose from these traits and decide which ones you're going to keep during the game and the rest you'll discard. Now everyone will get a siphon gem to start off stage one. So you take a siphon gem and you put it on, a, on each player's player map. And basically that's all you need and you can start the game. In this example, we're playing a three-player game. Once you set up stage one, your characters will have the opportunity to move into different zones and kill the enemies on that zone. Each enemy, if you'll notice, has an HP score and the amount of points you gain for killing it. So this one is two HP, you get one point. A character like this one is three HP and you get two points. There's four types of enemies and throughout the game, you want to try to get as many points as you can. To defeat an enemy like this, you need two blue cubes. An example here would be two cyan cubes. This character has three HP, so you need three green cubes. As you notice, there are all of those colors of cubes over here in what we call the nexus. So to defeat a character, let's pretend I'm this purple character here, Azrael. These are going to be miniatures in the future. But if I want to move from this zone, let's say to this zone, and I want to take somebody out. It'll cost me one cube of any color to jump into this zone because it's only one space away. In this move, in this game, you can't go diagonal. So, for example, if I want to go here, I would have to spend one, two cubes of any color. That means the color could be yellow and blue, pink and blue, pink and pink. It doesn't matter as long as you spend two cubes. So, for example, let's try. Let's take out this character. He requires three yellow cubes because he has three HP and he's yellow. The Sentinel will be defeated if I jump one, so I have to spend one cube of any color, and then three yellows. So let's pretend I've already collected cubes. I'll explain that later. But I have three yellow cubes, and I could spend one more cube of any color I choose. I'll choose pink. I would spend that 
put it over here into the bag where all the, where all the cubes are discarded. And now I can do it. I can jump into the space, take out this character. What I do is I put the character into my trophy room and I take this token and I place it face down so that at the end of the game, when we add up, add up points, I'll take the score from here. Now that I'm in this zone, I put a portal of my color and place it there. This means this zone belongs to me for the rest of the game. The reason that's important is because later in the game, as more zones are taken over by your character, you can jump from zone to zone for only one cube. Otherwise, you would have had to spend one, two cubes to go here, or one, two, three, four cubes to go here. But instead, I can spend one cube to jump all the way over here. Now let's say another player, let's say Zard, he's orange. If he wants to go over here to take out this character, he needs to spend one, two, plus two more cyan cubes. If he does that, because this space over here is blank, he can actually take over that zone for no cost, only the cost of movement. So he can spend one here, place his portal there, so now he owns it. Then on the same turn, jump over here. Take this guy out if he can afford it. Take the gold, because these count as bonuses when the game ends. Place another portal there. And actually, in this game, you can continue to combo. So you could technically, if you can afford it, continue to jump from space to space, placing your portals and killing enemies. That's if you can afford it. Some enemies are gray. So here's an example of an enemy that has the color gray. If it's gray, that means you can spend, in this case, three cubes of any of the same color. As an example, three yellow cubes, three pink cubes. You can't spend one pink and two yellows. You have to spend three of a kind. So I should probably explain what you can do on your turn. You're going to go clockwise, and let's pretend it's my turn. On my turn, I can do one of three things. One, I can move and attack the way I just showed you. I can move and attack. That's one turn. Or I can take one of these sets from the nexus. So I can take a set of colored cubes from the nexus. I can only take one set, and I choose which one I want. And that's it. That's my turn. Or I can do three. Third option is to use a siphon gem, which are relatively rare in the game. And you can take one and siphon from another player, meaning that you can steal two of their cubes, as long as those cubes are the same color. What I mean by that is if I want to take two greens from an opponent, I take their greens. If they don't have two greens, they only have one, well, if I want, I can take the one green. But I can't take one green and one yellow. It has to be the same color. So I can take two of one color from an opponent. As soon as I use that gem, I discard the gem, and then I can immediately move an attack. So it's kind of weird because you can steal, but you can also move an attack. So it's a bit of a, well, it's actually a very powerful move. So if you have a siphon gem, you can steal, then move an attack all on the same turn. So three things you can do. You can move an attack, you can take power cubes from the nexus, or you can siphon, move, and attack all on the same turn. So you can do one of those three things, and that's on a typical turn types. Throughout the stage, people will be taking cubes from the Nexus on their turn. As these cubes are being taken away, <clears throat> there'll be less and less options available. And when there's only one pile of cubes left, it doesn't matter which one, if there's only one pile of cubes left, it unlocks the next stage. So, stage two will unlock. When it does, you will take all the cubes, which will actually be in here, um, and you will place them back onto the Nexus randomly. If some people still have cubes, they get to keep them on their player map. Only the ones that have been discarded get reshuffled and placed back on the Nexus. Then each player will get a new Siphon Gem. So you'll distribute these out to each player. And then finally, you will unveil the next set of enemies on the stage. Right? If there are two enemies on the stage, you need to kill both of them to take over that zone. You can't just kill one and then wait for another turn. You have to have enough power to take them both out. So you unveil that stage and you begin to fill it up. So you put Blue Sentinel there, Blue Reaper there, Green Reaper there, and so on. Some of your special character traits only unlock in stage four. If you take a look and it says stage four on the bottom, that means you can only use these cards once stage four hits. So this one's unlocked by stage four, this one's unlocked by stage four, etc. When stage four appears, um, there's also something else you can do. Your trophies that you've been collecting all game can now be used as cubes. What I mean by that is this yellow trophy can now count as yellow cubes. So technically, you have two yellow cubes. 
this cyan trophy can be used as a cyan cube. So technically right now, you have three cyan cubes. Gray trophies count as any color, they're wild. So like a joker, you can make it a third yellow or a fourth cyan. Now let's go over here. Let's pretend Asriel wants to end the game. The game ends when one player gets rid of all their portals. If you look over here, actually, Asriel only has one port left. So this player can end the game if he's able to kill one more character. Here's Asriel. He's going to try to kill this Reaper, which costs four gray. Four gray means four of any of the same cube. So Asriel will jump over here for one and then jump into here for one more. So it's going to cost two to jump. Sorry, one to jump here, one to jump here, and then four of a kind. If you notice here, Asriel's character has four of a kind and exactly two to jump. Perfect. So Asriel goes here, takes out this Reaper, collects this, spends this stuff, this stuff all goes away, puts down his portal, and triggers the end of the game. Now I say triggers because depending on who started the game, players might be able to go again. What I mean is, let's say um, the player beside Asriel started the game, that player has had as many turns as this player, so they don't, get, they don't get to go again. But maybe the next player gets to go again because they've had less turns during this game. So everyone has the even, an even number of turns. So let's pretend the game is over. Now it's time to count your score. You'll use this sheet to help you figure out what your score is. Let's move over here to Azrael. Let's pretend that this player has killed this number of characters. So they have this many tiles that they've collected. They'll organize their tiles according to the type of enemy. So Reapers, Rachnoids, Sentinels, and Scrapnels. Those are the four types of enemies. And you'll add up score depending on how much they're worth. So the score sheet will tell you Reapers are worth four, Rachnoids are worth eight, Sentinels are worth two, and Scrapnels are worth one. You add up your score, and those are your base points. On top of that, there's bonuses. There's actually four types of bonuses. One of those bonuses is for whoever has the most beta tiles and alpha tiles. So whoever's collected the most of these red alpha tiles gets five extra points. Whoever has collected the most of these blue beta tiles gets five extra points. Whichever player has collected the most gold gets five extra points. And finally, the player with the most connections on the board gets another five points. Here's an example. There are one, two, three, four maximum connections that red has. But purple has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, purple killed it. So purple will get five bonus points for that. If there's a tie for bonus scores, then both those players, or all the players who are tied, would all get five bonus points. You'll use your score sheet, add up all your scores and your bonuses, and whoever has the highest point wins the game, survives the gladiatorial arena, which is the Galactic Coliseum, and everyone else is immediately executed. And that's it.